Please be seated. His Excellency the President, the Honorable Vice President, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of Government, Honorable Members of Parliament present, Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Distinguished Guests, good morning. Sometimes people describe Sierra Leone as a small nation, but since His Excellency took over the mantle of leadership, our ambition as a nation has never been small. This is because of His Excellency's determination to position Sierra Leone as a powerful and credible voice in the world. Therefore, we are here this morning as we aspire towards His Excellency's vision and we formally launch Sierra Leone's bid for a seat in the UN Security Council for the period 2024-2025. Before commencing this program proper, we will now invite the presence of God with the minutes of silence prayers. Amen. Amen. Distinguished guests, it is also now my pleasure to invite the Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for opening remarks. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Brigadier General Retired, Dr. Madabio, the Honorable Vice President, Dr. Mame Jude Gallo, the Honorable Chief Minister, Ministers of Government, the Secretary to the President, the Secretary to the Vice President, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Members of the Fort Estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very, very hearty good morning. I'm extremely delighted and elated to be part of yet another history making event, the national launch of the Sierra Leone Speed for a seat in the non permanent category of the United Nations Security Council for the period 2024 to 2025. Elections to be held, the General Assembly of the United Nations in June 2023. His Excellency the President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Sierra Leone is once again on the verge of ascending the global stage, especially as the sole African candidate. After 50 years, Sierra Leone as a small nation is becoming one of the most powerful countries in the world as a major stakeholder in maintaining international peace and security. There is no gain saying that we are in the process of rewriting and making history. Unequivocally, no country is in a better stead for membership in the UN Security Council other than Sierra Leone taking into account designs our unique history of resilience, peacekeeping, and peace building overridingly religious tolerance. It is now very timely, very timely and most fitting to share our experiences and values on the global stage, of which His Excellency himself is a testament to the true story. I am pleased to inform all that Sierra Leone is running with the fiat, support, and blessing of not only the sub-regional organization like us, but more importantly, and particularly so, our sub with the support of the continent as an endorsed candidate of the African Union. Amen. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all of these achievements have been hard earned as a result of the astral transformation and visionary leadership of no other person but His Excellency the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, retired General Brigadier Dr. Julius Madawonibio. 
His Excellency the President, distinguished guest. This may appear to be a clean slate. It is never a clean state. India scored a major diplomatic victory of the UN Security Council B by winning 184 votes out of 192 valid vote cast. But today, with all of these telling achievements, we are strongly optimistic that Sierra Leone would have an unprecedented, resounding diplomatic victory. His Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm highly humbled and most privileged to heartily welcome you all to this epoch-making launch of our UN Security Council bid, and to particularly thank His Excellency the President for taking time off your extremely very busy state duty to be here this morning. You are indeed a true patriot and an amazing state man. Once again, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to warmly welcome all of you eminent personalities to this august ceremony. I thank all of you and God bless us all. Thank you very much, DG, for that passionate welcome. Your Excellency the President, distinguished guest, to translate His Excellency's vision to meaningful action, there has always been one man who has been the driving force. And therefore, it is my singular honor and pleasure to invite the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Professor David J. Francis, for a statement. Your Excellency, Brigadier General Retired Dr. Julius Madadio, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Vice President Dr. Mohammed Joe De Jallo, Honorable Members of Parliament present, Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Ministers of Government and Deputy Ministers of Government present, the Secretary to the President, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, and members of the Fourth Estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning and welcome to this historic event. Historic in the sense that today we are assembled here at the seat of the Colonial Administration of West Africa, State House. So welcome to this historic event. Historic in the sense that 50 years ago, Sierra Leone was first elected to the United Nations Security Council, the world's most important body for the maintenance of international peace and security, 50 years ago. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, this most beautiful country, is heading back the United Nations Security Council. It's heading back to the United Nations Security Council for the period in the non-permanent category for the period 2024-2025 under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Gilles Madabio. Your Excellencies, this is historic because President Shiaka Stevens and President Julius Madabir are the only two presidents that have taken Sierra Leone, or will take Sierra Leone, to the United Nations Security Council. In the 61 year history of political independence of Sierra Leone, this is historic. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today is an important day in Sierra Leone's diplomatic trajectory. And it is, I have to emphasize, a testimony of the success of the foreign policy agenda of the new direction government to project and promote Sierra Leone on the global stage as a credible and respected country of standing in 
and the international community of states. We are a country of 7 million population. Today, we are a big country because of the aspirations of His Excellency, but to give his mother view. At the time when I was appointed as foreign minister, the president gave me a single directive, work with me to put Sierra Leone on the global stage. So today, Sierra Leone's aspiration to go back to the UN Security Council after 50 years is a perfect opportunity to tell the world about the success story of Sierra Leone as a country of residents, a country of hope, a success story in terms of transition from war to peace, a country no longer defined by its past, but now presented globally as a poster child of successful post-war peace building and state reconstruction a poster child of successful transitional justice, a beacon of hope for human capital development. Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone definitely has come a long way. Excellencies, today His Excellency the President will launch Sierra Leone's bid for a seat in the UN Security Council in the non-permanent category. But Mr. President, Today, your vision for global Sierra Leone, which has been implemented with significant progress in the past four years, with increasing international leadership responsibilities conferred on Sierra Leone at the global stage, is definitely now at its pinnacle. Sierra Leone is now globally recognized for all the right reasons. Today, it's a new dawn in global Sierra Leone. And I recall in May 2021, during Your Excellency's meeting with the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the then Foreign, Foreign Secretary Dominic Grapp, when I mentioned that Sierra Leone, according to His Excellency's projection, is global Sierra Leone, the then Foreign Secretary was taken aback because, as far as they are concerned, only Britain is leading the way. But we said, no, we are learning from you, and we can do it better as well, because we have the transition from war to peace. So today, Your Excellency, as we aspire for a seat in the UN Security Council, we are trying to project Sierra Leone on the global stage. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me provide for you a brief context and background as to why and how far we've come as a country. Sierra Leone became the... 100th member of the United Nations on the 27th of September 1961. But importantly, Sierra Leone was first elected to serve on the UN Security Council in a non permanent category in 1970-71. And this 50 year old history is well documented and gave impetus to Sierra Leone's recognition globally at that time. That is why during that period, Sierra Leone served on most of the UN. General Assembly committees, in particular the C24 the Committee for Decolonization. And some of us, especially those who are still young, will have memories of days when the then Foreign Secretary, then the Foreign Minister, Solomon A.J. Pratt, chaired the UN Security Council several times during our tenure. And in particular, our United Nations Permanent Representative the erudite academic, diplomat, and scientist, Dr. David Sinico, who did Sierra Leone proud by serving a successful tenure as monthly president of the United Nations Security Council from 1970 to 1971. Excellencies, after an absence of 50 years, His Excellency, the President, Dr. Julius Madabu, has decided that our absence from this important world body has been more than long enough. So permit me, Your Excellency, to take the opportunity of this national launch of Sierra Leone's B to set the stage for the messaging that is so important to be successfully elected during the elections to be held at the UN General Assembly in June 2023. But first, why the UN Security Council? Our UN Security Council B is in line with Section 10 of the 1991 Constitution that mandates our foreign policy 
to promote international cooperation for the consolidation of international peace and security. So this is our constitutional mandate. Our bid is in line with the president's vision to increase the voice and representation of Sierra Leone and secure the benefits of development for Sierra Leone. Our vision, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is that Sierra Leone has maintained an enviable record of support for multilateral rule-based, order-based world order. That is why Sierra Leone is increasingly elected and appointed to global leadership organizations such as Presidency of the UN Women's Executive Board, Presidency of the Arms Trade Treaty, Vice Presidency of the Governing Bureau, the Governing Bureau of the International Organization for Migration, and one of the co-chairs of WTO and co-chair of the UN Secretary General's SDG4 Education Summit. Who would have emerged? Who would have emerged that a country like Sierra Leone would be given that global platform? And one of the things I always say as foreign minister is that, you know, the role of the foreign minister is interesting. You only know that your country is doing well when you meet your counterpart foreign minister. They spend 20 to 30 minutes of your time praising your president and your country. You know immediately that your job is done. So imagine if you had to be president of Russia today. If you had to be Foreign Minister of Russia today, Foreign Minister of Ukraine, Foreign Minister of Afghanistan, that is what His Excellency the President has done for Sierra Leone and for the role that I perform, making the job of the Foreign Minister easy because of the liberal progressive agendas that we have been able to secure. So we all know, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that Sierra Leone is currently serving under the leadership of His Excellency the President as coordinator and chair of the African Union Committee of 10 Heads of State, promoting and canvassing and advocating for common African position for United Nations Security Council reform. I am sure, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that you will agree with me that serving on the UN Security Council is the best way of interacting with the complexities of the United Nations Security Council, other than just being a mere member of the Council or of the General Assembly. Sierra Leone is a small state within the United Nations. So our bid fulfills the vision of the United Nations for small states to be given opportunity for membership to serve in the UN Security Council. Today, Maldives, another small state, a country of half a million population, is the president of the United Nations General Assembly. So Sierra Leone, as a small state, is fulfilling that UN vision. So, Your Excellency, we have the credential, having consolidated Sierra Leone's hard won peace and security, and the country's enviable democratic credentials, which include four presidential and parliamentary elections between 2002 and 2018, and the transfer of political power from incumbent government to opposition political parties in 2007 and 2018, of which, Your Excellency, we are a clear, viable demonstration of that political transition. We have the credentials for religious tolerance and cohesion. We have had successful transitional justice, successful security sector reform, and the serious progress, Your Excellency, you have been making in promoting and consolidating a liberal, progressive governance agenda around press freedoms, around women and girls empowerment, around abolition of the death penalty, around free quality education, Sierra Leone is family on the global stage. Make no mistake. <laughs> Your Excellency, I have no doubt. We are ready. We are ready for a seat in the UN Security Council in 2024-2025. And this in itself is a testament both of our resilience as a nation and as a people and to the efficacy of multilateral cooperation through the United Nations in successfully de delivering peace in Sierra Leone. And we are always eternally grateful to the United Nations for facilitating the post-war peace building and state reconstruction in Sierra Leone. So the second aspect is, what is our vision for the Council? We are running under the theme partnership, multilateralism, and representative approach to sustain global peace and security. Excellencies, 
Sierra Leone's vision for sustained global peace and security is rooted in seven core areas, demonstrating a firm commitment to international cooperation based on agreed rules and the Reform Security Council, which provides equitable representation across all regions of the world, of which His Excellency the President is leading on. So our approach as directed by His Excellency the President will pursue priorities that support, strengthen, and address partnership and representation in the maintenance of peace and security, peacemaking, peacekeeping, peace building, human rights and accountability, women and youth in peace and security, terrorism and new threats to peace such as climate change and human security, small arms control and security council reform. Sierra Leone's vision in being in the, United, in the UN Security Council is to provide not only resilience but also hope. Hope that it can be done. It can be done in Ukraine, it can be done in Afghanistan, it can be done in Yemen, it can be done in South Sudan, and all the conflict on societies. That is why Sierra Leone and the Security Council will be a very powerful symbol of a country that has come this far. So let me move on to just briefly state how do we intend to make it happen? What's the process? First, we start with the nomination and launch of campaign, which has already been done. And today, Your Excellency, I want to thank you most profoundly. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, I have to crave your indulgence. I have to put this in the public domain. Without your directive, we will not be here. But what is more fulfilling for me and rewarding as Foreign Minister is your personal involvement. Your Excellency, you give the directives, but you also take part and you lead. Had it not been your efforts to go and engage with your brother and friend, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we will not be here. Had it not been your effort to fly thousands of miles away from the shores of beautiful Sierra Leone, sometimes the very turbulent landing process on airfields in Europe, in Africa, we will not be here. So I want to thank you on behalf of the foreign ministry, on behalf, on behalf of colleague ministers who believe in your vision, that you lead, talk, and you engage in the process. So we have had the nomination and now the launch of the campaign. So thank you very much, Your Excellency. What I want to put on the table, Your Excellency, is that this national launch will be followed by a series of external announcement events. It will start with a pre-launch reception on the 7th of July, 2022, in New York, led by the Foreign Minister, and a formal launch on the 19th of September, 2022, by Your Excellency, in New York, uh, on the margins of the high-level political dialogue, but also the 77th UN General Assembly. So both events, the pre-launch and the launch, will serve the purpose of the public external announcement of the bill and create visibility and audience around the candidature of Syria. Let me come to regional endorsement. It's important to emphasize this. Your Excellency, as you are aware, with your active involvement, starting from ECOWAS, we secured ECOWAS endorsement. Again, with your your engagement and your directive we secure the African Union endorsement, meaning that Sierra Leone has a clean slate candidature. We are not in competition with any other country. Sierra Leone is part of the three seats. <laughs> your Excellency, well, let me state that securing the candidature of Sierra Leone against our very own big brother, Nigeria, was no child's play. And I have to say on a personal level, I can safely say that I now have my own international diplomacy baptism of fire. <laughs> so let me thank the leadership and the magnanimity of Nigeria for graciously standing down in favor of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. <laughs> the campaign has already started. We secure the endorsement. So what we want to do is to engage with member states to secure not only the minimum votes of 
1997. But based on our current calculations and our engagement with all the regional organizations, we are canvassing and engaging with member states in Latin America and the Caribbean regions, Western Europe, the ASEAN Group, Arab League, the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, the Asian Pacific and Eastern European regions for support. Again, Your Excellency, the meeting in Brussels, where you engage with the leadership of the Organization of African, Caribbean, Pacific States, translated into endorsement for Sierra Leone's candidature of 79 member states. So it's very clear. Based on current calculation, even if we don't do any additional campaign, we have firm commitments of 121 states who have committed to vote for Sierra Leone. But we are not happy with that. We want to go for the highest number, unprecedented in the UN General Assembly. When you are a small state, and you have a president that believes in his mission to change and transform the country, you cannot settle for 170 votes. We want to go for 185 votes at the moment. Your Excellency, that is a tall order. I hope if we don't miss that, I can still keep my job. <laughs> but Mr. President, let me thank you for something that most people don't know. For profound, for the profound efforts in engaging with your colleague heads of state. I have seen you going out of your way, engaging with your colleague heads of state engaging with them and encouraging them, in particular some of the P5 member states to commit. P5 member states never commit. But that's understandable. But the way and manner in which you have done it, we've been able to secure commitments to vote. So Your Excellency, we will continue this multilateral engagement also when we go for the Commonwealth, for the UN General Assembly, for the non-aligned movement, for the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. So briefly, the stakeholders, your Excellency, you've already started engaging with your colleagues because they are the ones who will give the directive. The role of the foreign ministry is to coordinate and to instruct. But of course, our permanent mission in New York is at the fore of the action. And all our permanent missions in Nairobi, in Addis Ababa, in Geneva, will provide support to coordinate and also to gauge the commitments of member, member states to vote. Members of government, in particular, I want to acknowledge my colleague cabinet ministers, they have been 100% supportive, and in particular, the cabinet's approved strategic coordinating committee for the UN Security Council B, and includes the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, the Ministry of Information and Communication, the Ministry of Gender and Children's Health, the Ministry of Finance, and in particular, State House. Let me acknowledge your continued support in making this possible, and of course, members of parliament and political parties, the media and civil society organization. So let me conclude by briefly mentioning what do we expect to benefit from it. So membership of the United Nations Security Council will dramatically increase the visibility of Sierra Leone on the global stage. We will be sitting in that posture shape with all the relevant players that matter. Every member state, the 193 member states, aspire to be in that role, Sierra Leone will be in that role. Sierra Leone will have a voice and a say on the global stage on issues bordering on global peace and security. So if Sierra Leone gets to be in the UN Security Council today, we will be talking about sanctions, we will be talking about Ukraine, we will be talking about Russian Federation, legitimate security concerns. We will be there to make things happen, but also to draw from our experience. And the unique experience of Sierra Leone when we are there is that everybody said during the bloody civil war, nobody should engage with the rebels. But it took the leadership and courage of one man, now President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, to engage with the rebel leader. So the lesson from that that we will take to the United Nations Security Council is that you don't make friends with you don't make peace with your friends. You make peace with your enemies. That is Sierra Leone's single message. Had we not, had we not taken the 
courage of one man, then Major Gen General Julius Madaville, to engage in the RUF leadership. When at that time the RUF leadership was a mythical figure, we must have peace in this country. So that is the experience that we are taking to the Security Council. The opportunity to serve on the UN Security Council will provide opportunity for Sierra Leone to serve as president of the UN Security Council during its monthly presidential rotation. So it will give Sierra Leone the opportunity to shape and influence global issues relating to peace and security. And here, let me digress. In 1970-71, Sierra Leone, during its presidency in the UN Security Council, advocated and pushed for the return of the government of the People's Republic of China to the UN Security Council. Since that decision to promote and support China in the UN Security Council, the benefits of our special relationship with the government and people of China are visible for all to see. The EU Friendship Building, Chiaka Stevens National Stadium, the Foreign Ministry's Headquarters, the New Foreign Service Academy Building, Jue Friendship Hospital, the Bo Mini Studio. More than 1,000 students have studied in China. The list is endless. We will use our presidency. We will use our tenure during the UN Security Council to cater for the national interest of Sierra Leone. In addition, the visibility will be leveraged for gains in other areas, such as economic, commercial development, and public diplomacy. But most of we all know that membership of the Security Council will give Sierra Leone that power and that peace broker on behalf of the African continent. We are going to the UN Security Council as chair of the C10 advocating, canvassing, and promoting the reform of the UN Security Council. So what better way, when you are there, we will make things happen. And we have no doubt that our top can do president will be the one who will promote the reform of the UN Security Council after more than 56 years. The last time the UN Security Council was reformed was way back in 1965, when the change in Security Council membership from 11 to 15. So, Mr. President, this is your historic opportunity to lead on behalf of Africa. Your Excellency, it will also improve our standing, our reputation, and our image. It will also provide access for us to development, foreign assistance and development aid. For all those countries that have served, it always helped them. So, in conclusion, Your Excellency, Let me use this opportunity to thank those in the foreign ministry, the staff and the colleagues, our heads of mission, and those who believe in this project and have made it possible for us to lead. We also want to thank our partners, in particular our special relationship partner, and also the Kingdom of Morocco for the production of our campaign and promotional materials. So, Your Excellency, today we have campaign and promotional materials, seven years, and also publish a brochure of our vision statement and priorities in all the languages of the United Nations, which will be distributed following the launching event. Let me use this opportunity to invite you all to read the brochure, which is not only informative, but also a beautiful document which captures historic pictures of Sierra Leone in the United Nations. Your Excellency, it is our firm desire that this endeavor would contribute significantly to rebrand Sierra Leone as you steer the country through transformative development agenda for generations yet unborn. This will be your legacy, Mr. President. Therefore, I firmly believe as Foreign Minister, there is no turning back on this legitimate aspiration and ambition for Sierra Leone on the global stage. And for this, I thank you, and I thank you all. Thank you very much, the Honorable Foreign Minister. I'm sure there could have been no better marketer of the beat than your very self. Distinguished guests, every nation with great ambition needs a leader 
who is inspirational, motivational, and respected by his peers and the national community. And therefore, it is my distinct honor to invite and present for a statement the Chief Diplomat of the Republic of Sierra Leone, His Excellency the President. Thank you very much. The Honorable Vice President, Ministers of Government, Honorable Members of Parliament, Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. In just eight years after Sierra Leone had the singular honor to be elected to serve on the organization's most powerful deliberative body, that is the Security Council. We are going for that position again. These two unforgettable years of Sierra Leone's tenure in the Council from 1971 to 1972 served as bold footprints that continue to define our nation's commitment to its international obligations and its unflinching support for a multilateral, rules-based world order to advance and sustain global peace and security. As a nation, we have continued to play our part as a responsible member of the international community. Sierra Leone has proudly contributed troops and police to support peace support operations so that others may enjoy the peace that we enjoy in Sierra Leone today. <laughs> Fifty plus years later, after our tenure in the Security Council, we are once again presenting Sierra Leone's candidature for a seat in the non-permanent category of the United Nations Security Council for the period 2024-2025. Sierra Leone can today proudly boast of its credentials as a successful model of uh, reconstruction. We owe it to our global family of nations to share our experience and lessons in peacemaking, peacekeeping, and peace building. Now more than ever, we believe in an inclusive and consultative approach to peace that thrives on the consensus of United Nations member states in pursuit of common values and collective solidarity, irrespective of size, population, and economic and military power. Our time in the Security Council will therefore support priorities that strengthen and address partnership and representation in the Security Council. We believe that human rights protection and promotion builds confidence in democratic governance, bridges societal divides, strengthens a sense of common value and shared humanity, and promotes peaceful resolution of conflicts grounded in respect for the rights and dignity of all. <laughs> Testament of this is in our national approach in the abolition of the death penalty, joining of the International Religious Freedom Alliance and the repeal of the seditious libel laws. We will also use our seat to advocate for the youth and women in peace processes and peacekeeping operations as peace mediators. <laughs> we will focus on threats to peace, including terrorism and new threats, including climate change and human security. As a small nation that has once suffered from the dangerous effects of small arms proliferation, we will also spotlight small arms control. And of course, given the centrality of Sierra Leone's role 
as coordinator of the C10 on Security Council reform, we will continue to canvas, mobilize, and promote support for the common African position. We will unequivocally affirm the need for a system which will significantly contribute to holding the principles, objectives, and ideas of the United Nations Charter, Charter, uh, Charter for a fair world based on universalism, equity, and regional balance. We want to share with the world our unique selling points, our religious tolerance, peaceful coexistence, our resilience as a country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today as we launch Sierra Leone Speed for a seat in the non-permanent category allocated to Africa, I am pleased to inform that in the spirit of African solidarity, Sierra Leone's candidature has been endorsed by the African Union. <laughs> For this, I wish to thank the African Union, the ECOWAS, and our regional partners for the support and confidence reposed in Sierra Leone to carry the mantle for the continent. Within the context of its international obligations, Sierra Leone has been taking a more responsible part in the global arena as a small nation. Sierra Leone sits at the Special Committee of Decolonization, C24, has served as coordinator of the African Union Committee of 10 on the reform of the Security Council, C10, with the mandate to promote, defend, and canvas the common African position. Most recently, Sierra Leone was honored to be endorsed as the new chair of the African Peer Review Mechanism, APRM. As the 35th ordinary session of heads of state and government of the EU in February this year. The, li the list goes on. With humility, I must say that these important roles and responsibilities Sierra Leone has assumed on the global stage is a mark of trust and confidence in our small but beautiful nation. We acknowledge that this is an endeavor and it is a moment, monumental task and we cannot count on credentials alone, ladies and gentlemen. The responsibility of canvassing support for Sierra Leone's candidature lies not only with the presidency and the foreign ministry, I must say it is a national duty for all ministries and persons serving in government. I will even dare to say the fourth estate. It is a national assignment. I will call on our friends and partners in the diplomatic corps who are members of the United Nations during the elections to be held at the United Nations uh, as, uh, General Assembly in New York in June 2023 to be of immense help to us. Sierra Leone comes for your vote so that together we can walk towards our common vision for a stable and prosperous world. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great pleasure to launch nationally Sierra Leone's bid for a non-permanent seat in the United Nations for the period 2024-2025 on the theme partnership, multilateralism, and representative approach to sustained development. Thank you. A louder round of applause, a louder round of applause, a louder round of applause. Thank you very much for such an inspiring message. And I'm sure 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs will take that around the world to explain to his colleagues and other nations about our bid. Your Excellency, as part of efforts to create maximum visibility of the bid, we have now come to the presentation of promotional items, and it's now my pleasure to invite His Excellency to present symbolically two of the promotional items, two of the parts. Firstly, we will start to invite the Honorable Vice President to receive one of the promotional packs. May I invite the Honorable Vice President? <laughs> In the pack, we have the World Cup. We have a teacup, a die. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the President. I now also invite the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps to receive the promotional pack from His Excellency, the President. And finally, I now invite the UN Residence Coordinator also to receive the promotional pack from His Excellency the President. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Distinguished guests will later on receive a set of promotional items at the end of the ceremony. On that note, may I now gracefully invite all of us to stand for the national anthem for the closure of the program. 